Hello and welcome guys to this fourth episode of podcasts. I go about as many GFX and as you may know, this was called the Trading Psychology Podcast. However, I've decided to change the name to Trade Talks in which I'm going to be talking to various traders from the community and share tips and insights and learn from them to become successful at the skill of Forex trading. So on that note, in this episode, we've got a trader uh, named Osiris FX. He's also a co-founder of Archimedes Capital. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing well. And how about yourself? Yeah, doing all right. Doing all right. All right. How was your trading week so far? Yeah, the trading week, yeah, till now has been more or less rough. At the moment, I think I'm down 1.5 percent, which is, which is not that bad. But obviously, it could have been could have been a lot better. Right. I think that's mostly caused yeah, due to due to just not enough uh, not enough volume and volatility, which is just kind of causing a sick commotion and just hayway in the market. Right. I mean, I noticed this week that there's a lot of fundamental um, drivers in the market rather than technicals. I know that you are a technical uh, trader as well. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's the that's the main problem right now. Right now, it's uh, fundamentals is king by far. It rules. Uh, most of it is uh, on the pairs that I trade. Mostly are uh, NZD and odd. Right. They are heavily influenced by the price of gold as they're heavy gold uh, exporters. So that's why those currencies are, you could say, right now they're heavily overvalued as gold just keeps rising. So it's it's an interesting time in the market, definitely. But it's it's definitely a lot harder to trade than uh, than honestly even two weeks ago before before gold started pumping. Right, and uh, this is actually like you say, it's really interesting time in the market to learn a lot and to be patient. Um, you're down a percent you just said right now and it brings to the topic of being down and losing trades see for me um, I've had a I had and I still have sometimes a huge issue of being down for example if I do lose a trade and I'm in a losing streak I could get not say nervous or anxious but I start kind of like doubting and like overthinking the trades I'm gonna take and then not following yeah. my plan uh, I reckon many people have that. Oh, definitely, definitely. I can relate to you <clears throat> on that aspect as well. It's that it's just simply you're just afraid to lose more because if you feels like you're going uh, really, really far into the negatives when you just have to remember at the end of the day, it's all a part of your trading plan. You just simply have to stick to it. Right. But that also comes into the topic of adaption. Like, let's say this week, uh, I know that I, I use technicals for my trading, of course. But this week, for example, we knew that uh, fundamentals would drive. So in this case scenario, I'd be looking at the fundamentals to take the trades. But I believe that many people, uh, if they have a plan, let's say um, a systematic, pro I always call this a systematic process because it is. And they have like the plan which they stick mm -hmm. to. But let's say a week like this comes along where there's low liquidity and there's also a lot of uh, news. Uh, people still stick to their systematic process and they don't really want to adapt to actual trading the fundamentals and they keep taking the losses and blame their strategy for it. What do you think about that? Yeah, and that and that side, I'd say it's it honestly depends for what kind of strategy you have. Because, for example, right now, um, I see the supply and demand strategies. They're working really well as uh, price, I would say, has more time to, is moving faster towards those uh, towards those order zones, which, you, which can be found with supply and demand. And those, uh, that type of trading style, uh, more or less, stays fixed as you are still looking uh say way far into the past in a higher time frame for those uh imbalance candles but for example for the trading uh, the way that i trade is more uh say recent price action more technical uh, regarding fibs trend lines and key levels now i'm starting to notice that uh for example i used to put more um you could say trust into a trend line that was from uh, from way further back, as it it should be it should it should be more well respected as it's it's had more time to you could say accumulate orders, but that is uh, that is honestly the absolute opposite of what's going on right now. Those uh, those longer longer term trend lines, they're being respected less and less 
and the the new trend lines that are being formed honestly within a, a range of 10 to 15 candles those trend lines are tending to be the ones that make the most movers i feel like that is right now because of the low volume and as the forex market at the moment is extremely uh, over dominated out dominated by um, by the algorithms that trade which do use more frequent time frames to uh, to quick, to place quick trades that's the main reason why those earlier or not really earlier but more recent trend lines are being respected more which yeah you just have to you just have to pick up on that and start to and implement that into your trading plan at least for uh, for the time being until you could say markets go back to hopefully what we used to call normal right that uh, i agree on that but do you think markets will come back to normal honestly i doubt it as right now i've also been stepping on my fundamental game that's that's what i've been trying to uh, learn right now a lot more dive, right. dive more deeper into it and what i've been seeing more and more is is that there's a um, there's a really large trend of especially uh, European central banks of uh, buying in a lot of gold over the past, let's say, two to three years. And that's because um, I feel like everyone, not everyone, but more of the European Union wants to bring back a, uh, a gold standard in a way. Because at the moment for these past past five to 10, 15 years, they've been more outdominated by, uh, by the dollar strength as dollar has mostly been king in most transactions. But now they're trying to peg, I guess, general currencies and uh, just the global market back to a um, a solid a solid solid backing play, which would be gold again, which would bring back the gold standard. Right. However, I'm not sure. I don't see the possibility of the euro being pegged to uh, gold directly, as the U.S. dollar was. I mean, looking at how much uh, that affected the U.S. dollar back in the day, I don't personally think that's a feasible thing for to to happen no it's yeah it's it's a it's a theory because also on the other hand um uh, they might have just been buying in gold the central banks could have been buying in gold just so that um just because i guess they were expecting a um already a recession as it's been a really long time coming since a recession they've just been uh adding up more gold to their reserves yeah. which which is always which is always a safe uh, safe option during times like these I mean, obviously, yeah, gold is a safe haven, especially now looking at the price. We practically tapped uh, $1,900. Yeah, we uh, tapped 1900 and we're around about that mark at the moment. Yeah, I'm never seen also, before. You know, I'm, uh, I'm actually expecting it to even to even go higher because these are at the moment around about this 1900 area. Uh, <clears throat> let me quickly check. It's around about the, the highest wick that was recorded uh is at 1921 and we are really close to that without and we're not seeing any improvements or major improvements i'd say in in the current situation in the just in the world so i'm guessing i'm i'm actually predicting that it's going to go much past 19 uh, the wick of 1920 and into the new higher highs of the 2000 area yeah, absolutely agree there. Like we're uh, in our first wave of the COVID. Um, a lot of speculation on the second wave. I mean, many people without a doubt are already waiting for the second wave, more lockdowns. And uh, absolutely with all of that, uh, with all those new uh, restrictions, I definitely see the safe haven uh, going up further, especially with the tensions we have in Iran and uh, countries there, Egypt, uh, definitely gonna affect the gold going higher and higher but i also do see the usd the us dollar for example crumbling within the next uh, couple of periods right now we do see kind of <laughs> stability in between quotation marks as i should call it because uh, people still kind of have the faith in it and they don't really see what's happening behind the curtain but i do believe there will be a crumble soon enough because the us will not be able to keep up with the crumble that's going to happen yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally, totally agree with you there. That the U.S. dollar right now definitely is just simply being artificially supported by Absolutely. all of these quantitative easing injections. Just the amount of money that is being pumped in, which is yeah, making a, a trader's life an awful lot 
harder than it was a year ago or even six months ago as yeah, this, this corona has really greatly impacted many, many, uh, yeah, just what, what used to be norms, how things used to operate before. Especially right now then, yeah, how relating this back to then, uh, to, 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 for example, to my current situation, as I uh, was mostly focused on uh, NGD and odd pairs, they are getting um, a lot harder to trade as there is there are, there are massive spikes that are, that would occur, uh, especially for me at night, which makes it hard to predict when, uh, yeah, to for when when when, uh, for example, gold would heavily rise in value because some bank that started quantitative easing, which brings down the currency strength even more. So it's just getting a lot harder to play uh, positions on the, the normal pairs that I trade right now. So I've personally also been uh, switching more onto GBP pairs, right? Which which are which are in my opinion a lot more manageable at the moment. Um, but yeah, as you said, uh, especially with also US dollar, yeah, I guess you could say problems or struggles. GU is also getting a lot. A lot harder to trade as because mostly because of the the us dollar that's causing all of that yeah. all of the commotion and let's tie this back to uh, trading for everyone out there so um losing streaks right so let's say it is hard to trade that doesn't mean it's not tradable and definitely there's a lot of profit to be made because uh, if it's hard doesn't mean it's impossible it's definitely possible and we can see that uh, right now that the people who actually trade well and uh, you know us in the community we're also making a uh, percent um not maybe every week but we still are positive however let's move on to losing sheiks right what do you say to do or to traders who are struggling with let's say a positive week because i know for myself that if i didn't have a positive week let's say a year ago or even two or when i started trading I would really start stressing, right? I would start walking around and be like, oh no, you know, I'm not positive. Everybody's positive. Like everybody has in my eyes because again, Instagram, uh, huge influence, which is mm-hmm. negative. And you start creating this little image in your head that you're not worthy and that you're not good at it. And for me, that was a huge stress point. But now, for example, I just really chill out. A negative week doesn't mean it's bad. That means that your strategy, uh, how you traded it did not work out. That does not mean that it will not, that it will carry on being the same next week what's your take on losing streaks and what's your tips and advices in that sense yeah for losing streaks i'd say um it's 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 that um it's regarding social media that for example if you're in a losing streak and everyone else everyone else around you that you're you're watching stories and posts that everyone's profitable you just have to remember that also on social media the only thing they're only they're only posting they're winning trades at the end of the day they're not going to be posting their major losing trades. They're not going to be telling you they're, that they're that they're losing. Absolutely. Instagram is only the, you'd say the best. Uh, you're portraying the best version of yourself. Yeah. So there are not many people, hardly any people actually, are going to be honest about it. But for um, yeah, bringing that then back to your, I'd say more more personal life, then you just have to simply just accept the fact that. Yeah, this week your uh, your strategy just didn't work out, and I'd say that's actually quite a good thing because if you'd be uh, profitable every single week, week upon week, you would uh, you'd actually in your mind kind of relax a bit more about it because you're like, oh hey, I'm profitable again, I'm profitable again, I'm profitable again, and then at some point you would start slipping up, and that could be a horrendous week for you. Right, um, but. I'd say if you're having a losing week, a losing a proper losing streak, then um, you just have to figure out what what actually went wrong and break down that week. Check every single trade and why you took it, and um, I'd say also try and backtest, backtest that week, that exact week that you had a losing streak, and see what you could have done better. Right. And mostly right now, especially the losing streaks right now are obviously then back, back again tied to uh, tied to fundamental reasons. At least for me, most of them have been because of spikes and my sometimes I'd say lack of attention to to more recent live news such as Twitter headlines or and such things like that. Right. Yeah. Uh, I want to tie this back into actually not trading, but in anything in life, uh, at anything you do in life, essentially that. 
if you have, let's say, a losing streak in anything you do, it's actually really good because it gives you time to reflect uh, on the things you did do wrong and in a sense, keep your journal. And then from there on, you're going to be uh, like learning what you did wrong. And then for the next time you won't do it, you know, or you'll look out to do it better, for example. Yeah, exactly. You'll be more, you'll be more attentive looking for that exact mistake that you made again. Right. Like hoping to not stub your toe at exactly the same, uh, same place again. Yeah. Right. And like I covered in the other couple of podcasts with other guests, the instant gratification and that kind of looking on instant uh, social media, sorry. And to kind of think that you're going to start something and you're going to achieve the best of it within, let's say, a week or two or the moment you're going to start doing it. I think that's the, like I said prior already in a couple of other podcasts, it's the biggest kind of um, mistake people do is think that you're going to do it a couple of times, it's going to work out. Like, I think any process you're going to start off, especially with Forex, yes, you might have the first two weeks not bad. Like, you might have, let's say, call it beginner's luck. But then you're going to hit this kind of obstacle and, and wall, I should call it, where you're really going to be tested on how much you really want to do something. And I believe that most people do something they kind of think they want to do for the rest of like the 10 years to actually become good at it. But the moment they hit that one brick wall of actually putting in the real work effort and like the <laughs> sweat, blood and tears, as uh, some call it, uh, yeah. they kind of give up and they and they're like, yeah, it's not for me. What's your take on that? Because I think that is a huge thing that's going on in today's society is that most people think, yeah, I'm going to start. I'm going to be good at it because it's for me and I like it. And then a month down or two months down the line, they don't really have any traction in anything they do. And then they're like, it's not for me. Right. Yeah, I feel like um, um, you got to have to just, yeah, just fall in love with the with the process. Like, especially, for example, if you have a if you have a losing trade. It's more interesting for me to figure out why did I lose, what happened, figure out, like go to the bottom and, and answer to yourself what went wrong with that trade. Because usually if you just take a normal trade, it's, I'd say, for, for example, it's a good two confluence, third touch plus key level trade that you take and it does TP1 and TP2, you're like, all right, that's it. And yeah, that's kind of the instant gratification that you get there. But then if you, yeah, if you, if you, if you sat on a trade that seemed obvious, um, pretty obvious to you yeah well then uh, in that case i'd say then yeah it's it's the most interesting part of figuring out what went wrong there and instead of just uh kind of yeah just dropping throwing down your towel and saying that yeah this 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 is not for me or i don't like it or oh yeah this is way too hard you just have to kind of acknowledge the fact that nothing nothing is going to come easy obviously some things could come easy to you but that's yeah as you said that you could call that beginner's luck but at the end of the day you should be wanting to kind of go for it from uh, as as yourself like from the from the bottom of your heart you'd want to be wanting to do it yourself yeah i absolutely agree there um and okay let's tie this back into forex for the people out there a really interesting um topic and two words that are gonna ring a bell in your head signal services <laughs> right so signal service is a huge one everybody be a uh, forex guru nowadays everybody's uh, getting out their signal services let, let, let's be real right uh, those kids and those uh, guru wannabes in brackets are just getting your uh, commissions off of your trades and uh, those signal services are for you just to place your lot sizes your lots sorry on their brokerage and for them to earn their money and that's also the one biggest thing is that people get into this game they're like yeah i'm gonna follow a signal service for six months and you know and i'm gonna pay off this and i'm gonna pay off that yes of course there's signal services that are legit like but they wouldn't be like signal services they're gonna be like chart analysis or something that's not gonna spoon feed you more educational yeah right but i think it's that people think with forex is like a signal service oh, i'm gonna buy here i'm gonna buy there and then after a couple of losses on a signal service they're going to be saying, oh, Forex is not for me and Forex is a scam because instead of actually putting in their own work, they wanted to get spoon fed. And because the person who was spoon feeding them didn't know what they were doing either and essentially didn't really want to know because they're just caring about the commissions. It kind of turns this game of Forex into being a scam. And in the community, people call it, yeah, you can't earn money off of this. It, and 
But in reality, no, it's just a, a whole kind of um, black hole and in a sense whirlpool where those who don't put in the effort uh, feed the ones who don't want to put in the effort themselves and then they're losing and then they call this a scam. What's your thought on that? Yeah, yeah, that definitely adds a say a really a paints a really bad picture for uh, for the people that do try starting out forex as that is usually the first thing that they that they go for instead of trying to analyze something themselves instead of trying to figure something out they just quickly go to a signal service because that's just simply what everyone's advertising and that's the most readily and easily uh, available thing or just technique method to get you to the financial freedom that you're so looking for. It's, I also personally fell into this trap as I started trading. I feel like as a lot of people, that's, that's usually um, one of the ways in into Forex trading for a lot of the people as usually they, uh, they advertise these gurus that it is, it is that easy. You can, you can make this much percent. You can have this lifestyle in under a year and under six months. Yeah. Usually that's not even usually I'd say, all the time it's not the case but yeah sometimes people just instead of seeing it for too good to be true they just believe in it and and actually follow it the main problem with that is is that yeah if if you are following uh, one of those signal service providers and you are for example the one week that you do join them even even if this is a a, a positive signal service provider like more or less legit service provider that gives you good results and has backed up data even if you join in the one month or two three four months when they're having more of a slump and they're not doing that well you're going to have a negative vision on this whole forex market because to you you're going to think that oh i was i've been doing this okay not for a week not for two not for a month you've already been doing it for a while and it's still not working out and that's usually about the time when when people actually want to give up that's also I've been to that personally myself, where I, you just join a signal service provider and you think that oh everything is going to be perfect. You just start counting up all the imaginary percents that you could be making, but when it actually gets to it, and I simply just got unlucky. Actually, I'd say that rather than getting unlucky, I'd say I got, I got lucky because I um, I straight away I canceled the the signal service provider that I was that I was using. Right. And, yeah, I just kind of kind of went on a, on my own, wanted to do the analysis by myself instead of just simply just taking a trade and not really knowing why I'm taking it, not knowing why I'm either winning or why I'm either losing. Right. So you had the sorry, you so you had the motivation to kind of push through and learn it on yourself and find it within yourself rather than just calling this whole business a scam and stopping yep, yep, with it. Yeah, exactly. Like it kind of just at some point at that at that point there is there's two crossroads. You either you either call this whole, uh, yeah, just this the whole this whole trading as uh, aspect. Just yeah, you either call it a scam or you just get more interested into it. You either start diving further deeper into it and trying to figure it out and trying to, yeah, trying to make it because definitely it's it's definitely uh, it's definitely doable. It's definitely learnable. I honestly think that I'd say 80, 90 percent of the world or just anyone that attempts this could do it with the right resources and enough persistence but it all depends on yeah it all depends on the person if they actually want to continue right that's, yeah that's i feel like that's just just that's just the current society and the yeah, the current i'd say psychological brainwashing that's that's kind of happening yeah especially like just just quick apps like that they're having now TikTok is just everything just really really quick videos you just get a full gratification and then that's it that's that's all you want and then usually if, if a person like that wants to start trading, starts off with a signal service provider and it doesn't go the first couple of couple of times, they, they, they get sold out for the first couple of times, they'll just think it's it's a scam right away and then never do it. That's, a, that's, that's if you get lucky, but the other way around, if you get into a signal service provider, you start off with a demo account and then it goes positive for a month and then you start, you throw in a lot of real money because you're thinking like, oh, this is really that easy. And then once you, a couple losing trades in and you're over leveraged, you realize that no, this, this this might not be for you. But it takes it takes a strong mindset to kind of go past that and understand that like the the losses of what you're here for. That's if you don't take a loss, that means you're never gonna get better than well, yeah, who you were the day before. 
absolutely agree with you there. And uh, actually, a really funny anecdote with the two of us. Uh, if you may remember, three years ago when we started trading, we had our first live account. I don't remember. I think it was a half a thousand dollars. And yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we were in a signal service and we decided to um, take some uh, positions. And we took, I think, three positions. And I remember really vividly the the dollar rubble position on a micro lot. Yeah, and, uh, that was uh, we were... way too way over leverage for the account that we did have at that point. Yeah, we, we micro lotted it, and we were floating. I remember one hundred twenty dollars, and you know, if you guys do the math, uh, micro lot one hundred twenty dollars is insane amount of pips. Um, but we thought, you know, it can go higher, it can go higher. This is so easy, and we really got caught up, and we blew the whole account the, the same day. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. the exact same trade, and we didn't realize. Yeah, that exact same trade went from almost, uh, yeah, from 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 almost trying to flip the account to literally destroying the whole account. Yeah, but it did yeah. drive us deeper into wanting to understand, and that whole summer we were kind of battling that mentality of like we want to carry on, we don't want to give up, but we also want to rely on like some signal service, and we did. We watched a lot. Of, I remember we were watching a lot of uh, live streams, a lot of uh, yeah analysis yeah, yeah definitely but i think somewhere around a year after we just kind of detached from that and then since then we really just try to carve it carve the path for ourselves uh, by ourselves because we realize that we want to be in the place where we make the big decisions and not be and not be taking the decisions of another and not be kind of um, not reliant but how do you call that yeah dependent I'd dependent say. right and you want to be in charge so if you take the if you make the mistake no one but you is in control. Yeah, it's in control of that, yeah. And then you can then you are fully you're fully responsible for what has happened. And I'd say that's that's a lot of um that's that's what a lot of people actually don't want to take. A lot of people don't want to take responsibility for yeah, for what they actually themselves do. That's why a signal service provider is a, is an easy way out. If you get a sold out if if the trade didn't go well, you just simply say, or in your mind, you're just telling yourself that, oh yeah, I didn't I didn't come up with this. Another person told me that this that I should have bought here, and it didn't work. So oh hey, this is not my fault. I'll just try again, and then you just keep trying that again until you blow your whole account because that signal service provider is simply not profitable, and then you just blame it on them. Yeah, and it's actually your fault when you should have taken your own initiative to kind of dive deeper into it. And then make your own decisions for yourself for where for where to buy, and for where to uh, for where to, for where you want to sell. Yeah, what I want to say is that, but if you do have a winner, and uh, when you make that winner, our brain doesn't go like, oh, it's his trade, so thanks to him. No, in our head, we're like, we're the best. We made the decision, yeah. and that's where it goes wrong, I think. It's kind of it's kind of a one way street where if if it's. If it's going wrong, it's someone else's fault. But if it's going well, it's it's full it's fully your responsibility, and yeah. you you just you just made these profits. Yeah, and uh, that that you're lying to yourself. And the biggest yeah, thing, you can't lie to yourself in anything it's you do. Definitely a bias, a, a very hard bias to avoid. Um, as yeah, as as not many people actually will ever realize of the existence of this bias. As a lot of people will just. Yeah. kind of continue to live their lives that is just like oh yeah it, it, if something goes wrong it's not my fault if it goes well it's my fault uh it's 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 uh, it's my responsibility i yeah. i did this good deed or it's because of me this good thing happened but even mm. a lot of the time now like sometimes even when i do have a winning trade i'll i'll still actually just be like okay i'll still i'll treat it as a losing trade as for example sometimes you just go into very very heavy drawdown on a position and you still manage to either take profit out or you just manage to get out at break even and then at at that point i'd still consider that position a losing position to myself as it didn't do what what i wanted it to do instead i just ended up i'd say three four candles after the position has been triggered just sitting there only with hope hoping that this position would just get pushed up higher right Mostly, yeah. Honestly, relating that back, or that mostly that's because of fundamentals. Because right now, anyone, especially also with the, with the with the president's uh, new the, with the election coming up now. Yeah. Also, I think I read about it. Trump has about 1.8 trillion dollars left to spend. Uh, that that he has, I feel, I think, under his name, left to spend until he is uh, no longer the the president for the four years. 
and I feel like he right now can be doing a lot of not harm, but he can be doing a lot of yeah, he can be causing a lot of change just simply with his Twitter account, as he could just tweet something, and right. yeah, there there goes your whole position that you you've been waiting on for for the past. I don't know you could even be waiting on a position for a week on, for example, GU. Yeah. But you just have to simply, yeah, just simply at the end of the day, you also have to know when to, um, let's say, kind of give up looking for the the problem in that trade when it was simply just not in your hands. Right. You also have to understand when it's just when it's not you in control of it, but it was it was simply just. Yeah, you just simply got unlucky. That that also happened. That's also part of it. Yeah, you do have to accept. You know, you don't be stubborn. Like let it go, and then go on to the next one. I have a uh, question for you in regards of uh, motivation, right? So let's say we are put yourself into the shoes that you have a three week uh, negative results. You're down for three whole weeks, and yeah. the, the fourth week you have you don't you like you want to trade but you don't have that full motivation now you wake up and you're like yeah i want to trade because i know i like to chart but i don't want to lose where do you pull the motivation how do you pull the motivation in uh, in order to continue doing what you do not to give up and let and throw the towel in yeah that's uh for that usually what i personally do is i would um i would usually just back test Right. I'd start back testing. Um, I'd say I back test a month or two of uh, of a couple of pairs that I usually trade, just to kind of get back, get my mind and uh, just you could say my my focus towards the market back into bank into swings. And uh, yeah, if if I do have a two, yeah, I'd say two two or three week losing streak, then for a week I'd simply just I'd simply just trade a uh, either the same account but a lot smaller lot sizes simply micro lotting it just to see if what if 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 the the way that i'm trading now if the trading style is working with the current market dynamics and if it's not then i'll just simply i'll keep digging and um and find find what is currently working right um yeah that say either either reduce your um reduce lot size or trade a demo account but still trade not just kind of chart out for yourself and just leave the chart there and just not just not do anything with it still say get into positions still treat every position that you get into as a uh, as a real trade say risk uh, obviously don't risk a full percent per trade but it's say still you could still risk from a half percent on a trade to about 0.25 percent of a trade so it's still so still psychologically you're still trading, even though monetary-wise, even if you win or lose, you're not gaining or losing that much. Yeah, treat it, treat it like you have to treat it real, but treat it real on a real account. Don't treat it real on a demo, because that's also a big mistake I see people making is jumping on a demo yeah. and being like, "Yeah, I'm treating it as a real account." Yeah, that doesn't really work, you know. I think. No, yeah, that that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, that's. Um, you can't really. That's, yeah, that's you just. You just kind of get you just kind of literally simply forget that money money that money's even involved in it so yeah you just kind of over leverage start over leveraging things even if you don't even mean to but you just you you go you'll be going against your own trading plan yeah. scaling in or take take profiting out somewhere where you where you wouldn't where you wouldn't usually do that absolutely yeah no a lot of knowledgeable things uh, we just talked about a lot of uh, I, I reckon interesting things for people to hear out there because yeah it's not easy time to trade right now but it is a time to keep pushing and to keep uh, testing and fine-tuning and not to give up in what you do only because we've seen i mean these hard times these kind of hard times is we've never seen before right me personally not yeah. i'm pretty sure many yeah, people have and many uh, professionals say this is one of the hardest conditions to trade in the last 30 years um but that doesn't mean it's impossible and don't let like don't stop with what you're doing and keep on looking and understanding and digging in the fundamentals and the technicals and understanding what's working so for the next time this does happen or for any other scenarios that come along you kind of understand because if you give up you won't understand and you will think yeah i could have but you know you never followed through yeah yeah you simply just have to also I'd say uh, especially right now just simply document what's happening absolutely just write it down either for yourself or just make small notes of just things things that were were not obvious to you before but are obvious now 
yeah uh, with things such as a uh, for example right now a pandemic uh you the next time anything of these sorts that something that even looks like a uh, coronavirus you could simply just in your mind as you have still been actively trading this in your mind you'd right away know that uh, i don't know i'd say for example that oh banks are going to start dropping their rates and there's going to be quantitative easing most probably if anything gets worse Absolutely. so you can already prepare yourself for that and yeah that's just that's just the edge that you can have on the market the next time that something like this does happen yeah and especially with trading the only thing you only get better over time as as you simply just have more experience with anything honestly yeah. and if you yeah if you if you just simply trade for long enough at some point it will work out for some it might take years for some it could be months but as long as you just don't give up it will it'll keep working yeah and coming back to what you said right if if the people or the guys who understand fundamentals or were in this game long enough know that in situation of uh instability and in ca in this case severe instability we know that uh gold is a safe haven what would you do you would invest in gold so yeah. you know you as as uh, funny or as easy as this may seem you know if we heard that in february there's a whole pandemic coming on you know you could have literally had buys on gold and held it through the whole course of this year you might have widened your stop loss but you still could have had the like a wider tp or just like set it and see where it goes and takes you because you know it's severe instability we've never seen before and just those little things that you learn and especially like write these things down now. So next time we see severe instability, you can put that uh, buy position on gold and, you know, yep. make money to feed your family or to sustain. Even if you did lose your job, you know, you always got to find ways out of the situation you're in by just uh, remembering little tips and tricks in the skills you're developing. I yeah, you simply just have to, yeah, you just have to adapt to what is, uh, to what is now. And by adapting to what is now, you can also start preventing the exact same thing that is for example a couple losing weeks or a couple losing streaks happening to you the next time as as you've already experienced it yeah yeah and i'd say just most importantly also right now even uh, i'd say if you do find something that works or if something that is working now or something actually that is not working simply just always go back to your uh to your trading plan because um as standardized as, as you can make trading the easier your life will get like, yeah. let's say the more you can uh, just have specific criteria for why you would want to enter in a trade will make uh, make it easier and have yourself doubt less. Yeah. These might just be simply criteria like it, it's there's there's honestly there's there's millions and millions of different variables that could be influencing things. For example, the time of a trade or the, I'd say the amount of time that it takes from a trade to go from entry to uh, to final take profit or SL. There's, yeah. there's many things that you simply have to just pick up on those details and um, yeah, and just get, get an edge in the market. Yeah, and be patient. Most important thing is being patient. Like currently I'm running a position on your JPY. I've been waiting on this position to trigger over the last, I think 48 hours it has been triggered. I've been in severe drawdown, but according to my analysis, it should, and it did finally reverse. It took me approximately three to four days but we are in profit right now in this position so just stay patient and you know unless it fully goes against your plan and hits your sell okay just you gotta accept it but if it's still within your range of plan just keep keep it like yeah. follow it yeah just, interesting just kind of follow follow what you have right now but always keep building on top of that so every week i'd say just a small uh, small thing that you could do is just either what I usually do actually is at the at the start of a week, I just write down a, a couple skills, not really skills, but some things that I want to get better at in trading. Right. And yeah, you just simply execute that. And then at the end of the week, you just write down what you learn. And that's simply just the next little step that you take. It's never, it's never an elevator up there. It's never an elevator to success. It's, it's those small, small little steps yeah. that, that do set you apart yeah i mean thank you very much for sharing that uh really appreciate that hope you guys also learn from this uh, is there anything else you maybe want to add to this we've had a really insightful talk uh is there anything else you maybe want to tell the people out there for the times of? Uh... i'd say i'd say that's 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 everything that i had on my mind right now and just 
just simply just be present, be aware of what's going on, and yeah, don't don't forget what you're learning about right now. All right. Yeah, absolutely. So for you guys uh, listening, we'll definitely write up an article on all the key points to take away from here that Osiris has mentioned. Um, that will be done in the coming week. And uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. And uh, there's much more to come, guys. So stay tuned and uh, take care.